Okay, so in today's math lesson, we started talking about dot plots and taking data and creating dot plots and using those plots to answer some questions. So here we have the uh, dot plot for some NBA basketball players and their vertical jump, how tall they can, how, how, how high they can jump. And you can see that we don't really have a wide spread here. It's pretty narrow. It's a narrow spread because we have a, a, very, a very dominant value that shows up here with 38 inches, which is quite the vertical jump, by the way. Um, and it's showing up a lot. And then we have some satellites out here, uh, some unusual values that are to the left and to the right, which is, uh, which is common or typical at the same time. So let's see what's up, because not everyone is built the same way. Not everyone jumps as high as everyone else. We're all individuals. So this is pretty typical. So we also notice that things are in, uh, the unit is inches, and our lowest value is 32. Our highest value, if this is going by twos, um, I tend to put one more hash out here. I would put 44 so I can read that guy nice and easy as a 43, this guy over here. So I tend to go out. Uh, I may even go out over here and put a 30. So I probably would have gone a little beyond what they supplied for us. But now using the dot plot, we can very quickly answer some questions. First question being, what statistical question do you think could be answered using this, uh, using this data? And that statistical question, um, it's pretty obvious. We're just looking at the data. You can say something like, well, um, Let's see, what are the vertical jump heights of NBA players? And keep it as simple as that. Um, and then it goes into, well, what is the highest vertical jump? And the highest vertical jump, you're just going to go all the way over to the right and find that value, and I'm between 42 and 44. So that answer is going to be 43. Okay. Uh, what is the lowest vertical jump by a player? And then I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to cruise all the way to the left, find that smallest value. I notice that it's sitting right on that 32. And that's going to be my answer for that. And I want units as well because I know they gave us units. So I'm going to write that in inches. And what is the most common vertical jump in height? Now, the, the most common, that's going to be the one that shows up most often. So I'm looking for my tallest column here. And that's going to be 38. I don't even have to count them, which is nice. I'm just looking for the one that has the most dots. And on and on you go, okay? Now, what I like is the next section here. There's the next section. Gives me two dot plots and two scenarios, and I have to try to match them up. First scenario, what is the number of fish, if any, that students have in class in an aquarium in their homes? Now, I don't know about you, but I had one fish growing up, and he didn't live very, very long, so uh, it wasn't common for us to have lots of fish wasn't a very popular pet to have. So, uh, But if you did have fish, some people had a larger tank that had a lot of fish. Um, but I would know that there were kids, friends of mine, that didn't have any fish at all. So zero might actually be a common value. Okay, And then we have another scenario. How many days out of the week do children on my street go to the playground? Now, you may have a playground that's actually um, right there in your neighborhood, right on your street. Or you could also include playgrounds that are at a school. And if you're going to school every day, um, you're certainly going to be at a playground. So I don't know if you're going to have a zero value if the playground is at the school and you're going to school each day. So taking a look at these dot plots, we have dot plot A. Now I notice I do have a zero value. I have lots of zeros. I have lots of twos, lots of fours, lots of fives, a couple of threes. And I have one way out here at 10. And I have some with just zero. Um, and as far as the playground is concerned, if all the kids are probably on a playground, I don't know if I'm going to have a zero value. So I'm not sure if I'm going to choose that for B, for this scenario. Okay, let's look at the other one. The other one, uh, dot plot B, we have no zero value. Okay, and we have tons of fours, and we have tons of sixes. And I'm liking that four. That's making a lot of sense to me as far as hitting the playground is concerned. You're going to have tons of kids on the playground all the time, especially if they're going to school. You probably won't have any zero values. So I'm going to go with the playground over here. Okay. 
and I'm going to go with the number of fish here. Now, th this might not be set in stone, and I could be very wrong, but according to my own background, my own knowledge, and that's really what I'm relying on, I'm taking an educated guess and saying the number of fish is going to be plot A, because not every kid is going to have fish, okay? Or maybe they'll just have one or two, and maybe you'll have that kid who's really into it. Maybe parents are into it also, have that big old fish tank. So you might have one kid in the class like that. But as far as the playground is concerned, looks like you're going to have lots of kids on a playground all the time because they are children and they want to play, and they may have a playground nearby um, by their home, and they'll be out there playing after school perhaps as well. Okay? So that's the deal today, just taking a look at data, analyzing it, taking a look at dot plots, and uh, comparing those dot plots to situations. All right? Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.